Hi everyone, Monica here today, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make a paper bound flipbook for the Crafter's Castle Challenge. I'm gonna be using the Under the Boardwalk Digital Pack by Taylor Made Cards for You. Here's a look at some of the items included in the pack. You're gonna receive two different types of tags, one with the Vintage Girl and the Crane. You'll also be getting an individual Vintage Girl, some beach goers, two coins, and a lady on the beach. Also included is a bill of fare and some admission tickets. This cute little vintage comic is perfect as a tag. Now you're gonna get some prints for seagulls with um, a little bit of lavender. I think that's perfect and matches very well with the digital prints that come here. Now these I printed on eight and a half by 11. And as you can see, they come in A4 and then also half sheets. I think this section here would be perfect to cut out the center. Here's the color palette that I chose for this. I think they match the gift tags perfectly. To start, I cut out my cardstock into A2 sizes, two of each color, with the exception of the sand, which I cut out four since there's gonna be a front and a back. I then adhered all the pieces together of matching colors with liquid glue. Now that these are ready, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut these with the wonky stitch die cut. This is an A2 size, a little bit under an A2 but I love the details that this gave my uh, backings. Look at that, all the stitching all around, even on the back side. But I might just end up covering that a little bit just to kind of give it a cleaner look. For the binding mechanism, I'm using a piece of cardstock measuring six by three inches. I'm going to score this along the six inch side every half an inch. I want to make the edges a little bit more decorative, so I'm gonna die cut this with an edging die. This is a stitch scallop die from Simon Says Stamp. And as you can see, it left a beautiful edging. Now it's time to fold this accordion style, making sure that you crease properly. Each valley will be where you nestle in your cardstock, as such. For my closure, I'm gonna utilize ribbon. I placed the front and back covers with the insides together. I took a length of ribbon and cut it down the middle, so that way it would be even on both sides. Utilizing double-sided tape, I placed it straight down the middle on one cover and then down the other cover in order to make sure that they remain centered. With the closure complete, it's now time to decorate my cover and I'm gonna use a banner as well as some oval scalloped uh, die cuts that I made, utilizing the seagulls with the lavender and some of the printed cardstock that kind of looks like bubbles that comes with the pack. For the banner, I decided to place it behind the image and I did have to glue that down and then trim away some of the excess just to make sure that it fit properly. I'm going to adhere these two items to the cover utilizing a quarter inch double sided tape. This will give me the perfect height, not too much, not too little. I'm going to go ahead and fold up the little tails from the banner just to give it a little bit of depth. Time to add in sentiment. I hand wrote memories and decided to use uh, evergreen bow in order to bring in some color all around the edges. Now it's time to start the binding process. For the cover, I'm gonna go ahead and add glue to both sides of the valley. This will act as my primary holding bind. Once the cover is in place, you'll want to make sure you press firmly down to allow it to adhere. 
Now I could have done this first, but I really wanted that scalloped edging to show. From here on out, I'm gonna add glue just to the right side of the valley in order to adhere my panels into place. I will line up my panels one on top of the other in order to make sure that they align. This is easiest done while it's lying face down. With my panels all in place, I'm gonna go ahead and glue my accordion from the outside. I'm going to hold this all together with some binder clips and allow it time to dry. Once dry, you will have a completed flip book. And here is what it will look like. As you can see, it is a very nice binding that allows you to flip from page to page. Let's get decorating. For this flip book, I'm gonna cover both the front and back of each panel. This will give me some space to be able to add mementos or some form of pictures. As you can see here, I am adding crinkle binding to the back of my cover, and this is done by utilizing 1 8 inch um, double-sided tape and adhering that down, kind of in a pleating motion. I decided to use the vintage cartoon label here. That way I can add a date, a time, location. I thought that would fit perfectly. Then I also added in one of the coins in order to help decorate. The coin I decided to use was that of the bird. I also die cut this and the other token with a circle wonky die, as you can see here. For my first page, I decided to use the memory box loopy rings die. It kind of reminds me of bubbles in the water. So I utilized this in that way to bring about the idea of bubbles. I think this came out spectacular. Now I'm gonna bring in the crane tag. I'm gonna add a little bit of embellishment to this by utilizing um, the crocodile to pull punch it and add in an eyelet. I want this crane tag to be more or less a backdrop. I'm going to add a piece of sand colored cardstock that I cut with the wonky die. And this is where I'm gonna place my picture. I'm gonna embellish this with a couple of crystals on each corner. Since this is my main page, I decided to add the sentiment under the boardwalk. Why not? This would match perfectly with the whole entire paper set. Now I came in with some vintage photo and just blended in some color and crinkled up my paper just to give it a little bit more depth. This gave it more of a distressed look. For my second page, I wanted to cover up the binding. So I came in with the stripe printed cardstock that comes as a part of the pack and glued that directly down onto that page. I also
also created a little pocket out of light blue cardstock that I adhered to it. I utilized the single vintage girl that comes as a part of the pack in order to embellish this on the right corner. This little pocket needed a tag. So I used my poppy die stamps, Main Street tags, in order to create this. Using my nautical stamps from Tim Holtz, I decorated this by stamping out some sand dollars and stars in vintage photo. I figured this would be perfect to add a photo or some type of memorabilia to attach to it. Moving on to my next page, I use these lovely ladies to decorate the corner of my third page. I figured with the light blue, this would be perfect. Utilizing one of the darker blue card stocks that I have, I die cut a scallop circle to attach to this. I also used one of the tickets to add as ephemera. I'm gonna blend in some Mermaid Lagoon onto this card stock just to bring a little bit more color. I'm gonna finish this off by adding in some blue crystal embellishments. For my fourth page, I wanted to make this a double picture flip up. So utilizing cream colored cardstock, I folded that in half in order to create kind of a flip up. I used the Vintage Beach Goer as a cover for that. I die cut some banners from various prints and colors in order to create a little bit more of an embellishment and bring in some color to this light blue cardstock. Having embellishments and coverings like these allow me to cover up that binding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and link all the dies and items that I used here in today's craft in the description below. Most everything in the craft today are going to be adhered with liquid glue or some type of double-sided tape. This is only so that we don't create too much bulk. Time to adhere our lovely lady down. I love the image and the pop of red that comes off of that image, it's just stunning. For page five, I wanted to use the Vintage Girl tag. In order to embellish that, I used two strips of paper, one that was a part of the print from the package and a plain cream. This will add a nice little edging to my tag. Utilizing liquid glue, I adhered this onto my tag. I then trimmed off all the excess. Once I trimmed off all the excess, I lined this up onto my backing so that I can lay out my ephemera. I will maintain the tag in place so that I can easily glue down the tickets where they need to be. I figured this needed a little something more, so I came in with my 1 8 inch double-sided tape and laid that down. I then adhered some aqua color crinkle binding. I twisted this so that way it would come out nicely. Finally, I added the last of my coins. I adhered that using liquid glue. For page six, I wanted to make a bird background. But first off, I wanted to cover up my binding, so I utilized some of that bubble printed paper. I used the crane tag 
and the seagull paper. I die cut them with Lawn Fawn scallop dies, so that way it would have a nice look. One smaller than the other one. This would give it somewhat of an askewed look. Again, these are all adhered with liquid glue. And then I used a white scallop cutout, and that's gonna be the base for my picture. I also cut off a section of the bill of fare in order to create some form of embellishment for this. For page eight, I wanted to create a little pocket. I die cut half and half of the digital paper pack in order to create this look. Using the Main Street tags, I die cut the bill of fare as well. This is gonna be used as an embellishment. I'll glue this down to the back. But first, I'm gonna stamp out a conch shell and some starfish onto my tag. This will add a nice decorative touch. Placing my tag back in place, it will allow me to locate where I want to adhere my embellishment. I then stamped and cut out a conch shell out of the same color paper as the tag. This will act as an embellishment for my pocket. Utilizing crystal stones, I'll go ahead and add three or four of the light blue. We've come down to page eight and the very last page. For this, as you can see, I used the very center of my printed digital paper. That gave me a really nice look. I die cut the second of the vintage girl tag that I had and used that as my image. I also added a banner in order to embellish this. I did handwrite the embellishment, Summer's End, Again, I'm going to distress this utilizing vintage photo distressing. My final embellishment will come in the form of pearls that I'll place at each corner of the photo. All that's left is to tie up the closure in order to trim off some of the ribbon. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and have a look. Here's the finished project. This is a nice little piece that you can leave on your coffee table. This is a great way to display some of your summer photos. I love that this flipbook has some interaction with some of the tags. Thank you for joining the Crafters Castle YouTube Hub. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe. Visit the blog for more information at www.hardcraftpaper.com. Thanks for watching Heartcraft Paper.